Today we're going to be talking about ISO invariance. And this might sound a little bit complicated, but it's actually very simple. All it means is that if your camera has an ISO invariance sensor, you can increase the exposure in post-processing with no quality loss. For example, I took this photo of an owl with a very fast shutter speed and a low ISO. Therefore, the photo is very underexposed, and this is a raw image right here. Now, all I had to do, thankfully, was increase the exposure in post-processing, and I have this image here. The exact same photo, all I did was bring up the exposure slider. And you can see there's still a lot of detail here. There's hardly no grain, and the image looks fantastic, even though this is how it originally looked. Again, that's an ISO invariant sensor. It's gonna allow you to pull out all this detail if you accidentally underexpose your image. If you have an ISO variant sensor though, and you try and increase your exposure, you're gonna get something like this, where there's a lot of grid-like patterns, there's weird coloration, and overall the image is gonna look awful. So if you have an ISO variant camera, what you'll need to do is use a higher ISO in camera. That way you don't have to brighten it as much in post-processing. And there's a lot more that goes into this, but next I'm gonna show you a series of images and how to take them. That way you can determine for yourself uh, which camera sensor you have. All right, so I've got all of my images here loaded up in Bridge, and now we're gonna open these up in Camera Raw. And the way you're gonna to wanna to do this is take a series of images on manual mode. In this case, I used F2.8, a 10 second shutter speed, and I started off at ISO 3200. You can start off at a higher ISO if you want, like 64, or even 12,800, but that's gonna be your baseline exposure. So once you've taken your image at whatever ISO you want, then you're gonna take another photo with the exact same aperture and shutter speed, but you've lowered the ISO by one stop. So again, I went from ISO 3200 just down to ISO 1600, and I took another photo. Then I lowered the ISO one more stop to 800, 400, 200, and 100. So once you've done the same thing and you've got all of your images ranging from 100 to 32 or 6400, you're ready to follow along. And what I was talking about with the owl is that we have this exposure slider right here. All things considered, if you have an ISO invariant sensor, this essentially is like increasing the ISO. Now, I know a lot of the technical people will say it's not true and they're right, but as far as we're concerned, increasing the exposure is essentially like increasing the ISO. So for example, this is an ISO 1600 image, right? If that's one stop less than 3200, then all I have to do is increase the exposure here to plus one. So now I've added a stop of light essentially to the 1600 ISO image. So if I compare the two now, they look identical in terms of brightness. You wouldn't even be able to tell there's a difference there. So I can do the same thing now with the ISO 800. I'm gonna increase it by two stops to match our baseline image here. And again, they look identical. So now I'll go to the 400. I'll increase this by three stops four stops, and then five stops. And you'll also want to adjust the white balance here because it looks like it changed. So if you select all of your images and then put the white balance to anything other than a shot, it should work fine. So now they're all the same white balance. And again, this is an ISO 100 photo. This is what it originally looked like. All I did was increase the exposure slider to plus five. Now when I compare this to the ISO 3200 image, they look again virtually identical. That's because I'm using an ISO invariant sensor. Now, you might be thinking, okay, that's cool. We can increase the exposure. There's no quality loss. That might really help us out. But, you know, what else is this actually going to do for me? Well, the main reason you'd actually want to use a lower ISO is to preserve detail in your highlights, whether you're light painting or anything else. So, with that in mind, here we have our ISO 3200 image again. And we have these houses down here with these bright lights, right? If I decrease the highlights and even the exposure, see how the data is clipped? It's barely clipped, but it's definitely clipped here. There's no way to get that detail back. It's completely destroyed. However, if I took the ISO 800 image now, we'll zoom in again, I can lower the highlights and the exposure even a little bit. And now I have a lot more detail here that wasn't clipped. Or I can even go down to the ISO 200 image and try the same thing. So see, we can actually, <laughs> kind of creepy, we, we can almost see in the house now. So what that tells me is that by using 
an intentionally low ISO, I can preserve detail in the highlights, but also increase the overall brightness in the photo to get essentially a really nice image with a lot of tonal contrast. If I were to take the ISO 3200 image though, there's no way I'm ever going to get that detail back in the highlights, it's clipped. And again, in this case, it doesn't really matter, but if you're doing light painting, this would really hurt you uh, using a high ISO. So next we're going to look at the shadows and compare the difference between all the images. So I have those loaded up into Photoshop and we'll head over there next. So once you've equalized the exposure for all of your photos and you've got them loaded up into Photoshop, I've renamed all my layers here. And at this point you want to find the darkest area in your photo because that's going to show uh, the worst results basically. So right around here is going to work good for us. Next what I'm going to do is just toggle off these layers one by one and we'll see if the grain gets worse or if any other artifacts pop up. And when I get to 100 here, you can definitely see there's some weird coloration going on compared to 200. So that tells me that for whatever reason on the Nikon D750, you don't want to use ISO 100 at night because you will get some artifacts. So to fix that, the lowest you'd want to go is ISO 200. And you can even use a slightly higher ISO if you want. Uh, but just to recap, to make sure we're all on the same page, with an ISO invariant sensor, you can, you'll have to test this on your own like I'm doing right now, but you should find an ISO that's relatively low where things still look great. And the reason, again, you would use ISO 200 rather than 3200 is simply to preserve detail in the highlights if you need to, if you're doing light painting or anything like that. Uh, it will have more dynamic range, essentially, uh, by using a lower ISO. Again, that's for an ISO invariant sensor, which we're looking at here. Now, if you have an ISO variant sensor, which we talked about earlier, then you're gonna see severe quality loss here in the shadows. It's all gonna look way worse than this. So with your ISO variant sensor, you're gonna to wanna to intentionally use a higher ISO. That way your shadows don't look terrible. So again, if we come back to our example here, this is roughly what your images are gonna look like with an ISO variant sensor. If you intentionally use, let's say, ISO 200 or 400, and then have to increase the exposure. So you'd be met much better off just using a higher ISO in camera. Now, since I don't have an ISO variant camera to demonstrate, it's kind of hard for me to do besides this image. So I recommend you head over to my website. I've got a full blog post on ISO invariance, and I'll have a link in the description of the video. So on that uh, blog, there's a ton of great links. So if you want to go over to Lonely Spec, he's also written about this, and he's got some actual examples that'll help you understand this even more and a whole lot inf more information if you're interested. But the big takeaway today that I wanted to share with you guys is simply that if you have an ISO invariant sensor, you can take an underexposed photo and create a beautiful final image with virtually no quality loss. On the other hand, if you have an ISO variant sensor, you're gonna get something like this. So you'd be much better off intentionally using a higher ISO, that way you don't have to increase the exposure. And we saw that in camera raw uh, just by increasing that slider. So that's all I have for you. If you do have a question, leave a comment and I'll try and explain things better for you. Uh, but that's all I got for you today. So thanks for watching.